Good day, YouTube. 1MJ here, and welcome back. All right, Sunday evening here in Australia. So obviously Monday coming up, and we're waiting to see how the markets are going to perform. Look, the market is up ever so slightly. You know, 0 0.2 percent. So up around that 2.14 trillion dollar mark. So that's nice. Again, has a CME gap been created over the weekend? Probably a little bit. Will that possibly get uh, filled sort of first thing Monday morning or even sort of later today? Absolutely, definitely possible that that can happen. But look, up 0.2%, still nice and above that $2 trillion mark. It was literally only a few months ago we were languishing down at kind of the $1.2 trillion mark after we'd been at I think $2.7, $2.8 you know, sort of six months ago. So yeah, super volatile market and welcome to cryptocurrencies. That's the way this game plays. Look, volume's down though, again, to be expected. It's a weekend, there's generally a dip in volume. BTC price is now 49,000. It just keeps hovering around that $50,000 mark. And gas prices have risen. A little bit strange, not sure why they're rising at the moment over a weekend, but they have. All right, bit of a mixed bag though. I mean, you know, we can see a few losses here, but the market is up overall 0.2%. So what's been the best performer in the last 24 hours? In the top 100, which is what I mainly focus on. Right, near protocol, nice, 28%. Voyager token, I mean, it's just chopping and changing all over the place, you know. Up 21% in 24 hours, which is good, but we can see here it really is just very, very choppy. Rune Thor chain, look out, come back from the dead, uh, doing all right. Adam up nice, FTM engine, nice little pump there. Chili's nice, Filecoin, nice. Uh, Ada, Algorand, look, a number of nice gains there. A couple of good dig double digit ones and some nice high digit ones. And again, it's to be expected because the market's up overall. What about losses though? Because there's always outliers. There's going to be a co couple of coins that probably haven't done as well, haven't fared quite as well. So there we go. XDC Fin, uh, XFIN Network, chopping and changing around a little bit. Safe Moon, I mean, it just basically sits around that two mark. Terra Luna having a bit of a pullback. Again, had a mad pump. So look, you know, bit of sort of nice gains and not so bad losses, which is all right. But again, we're still really waiting. Not much can, ha not much happens over a weekend usually. And if there is a bit of a gain, which we've had, it usually gets kind of eaten up, you know, again, either sort of Sunday night or definitely Monday morning uh, to cover any CME gaps. Uh, that we do have and we're going to have a look at the CME gaps very shortly but generally things not too bad and again it will take any kind of gain over a loss any day right here's the Bitcoin chart so what I had to do was I now had to extend this out because it looks like it was going to stay in this upwards trending channel that it's been in now again this might change and then I'll have to change it again but at the moment it wicked out, so not wicked out, but you know, fell down below, but now it's back in this trending channel that it's been in since the crash of March last year. So, all right, let's have a look. What is Bitcoin doing? So this is where we're at. Broke up into the channel, fell back down, broke up, and now we are literally bouncing off it and we're staying above the 200 day moving average, which is really nice. Now, again, we still have to kind of break. We're at this kind of 50-ish thousand dollar level. Not quite there, but not too far off. But it's really this kind of mark here, $52,000. If we can break above that, I think things are gonna move fairly fast. But not just a wick, because we could, you know, kind of wick above and then come back down again. Totally possible. Not what I'm thinking is going to happen, but just keeping it in mind. But the thing I'm most happy about is we are finally above the 200 day moving average, which is really nice. But also, we are back in this upwards trending channel. So this is still live, but it may still be invalidated, invalidated sometime very shortly. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, a couple of interesting stories. And you know, the, the writings on the wall and even surveys of people from old traditional financial institutions are starting to understand. The future belongs to cryptocurrencies. Banks must embrace it, a Deloitte survey said. So most executives at large corporations foresee that digital assets will be an important part of the future monetary system, a research has concluded. 73%, that's nearly all of them. So there's a couple of stubborn ones who just, 
you know, and there always is, there's people who dig their heels in and particularly the older, you know, the older people, they just don't like change and, you know, we're all going to get old someday and, you know, possibly fall into that bracket. But most of them, 73%, it's nearly three quarters of senior executives at financial institutions fear their companies will fall behind in terms of development if they fail to adopt virtual cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. So that's 73% of them there. 76, it is over three quarters, believe that digital assets will replace fiat money in the next five to 10 years. So not the dollar, the dollar's still going to be around. Just paper money, the actual paper money, that's going to be gone. I don't think the dollar's gonna die in the next five to 10 years. I could be wrong, we'll have to wait and see, but there'll be digital dollars. But I think, you know, the paper money that we have, yes, I think that'll be gone in the next few years. But again, this is very interesting. You know, you, you would have gone back only like a year, 18 months ago, and this survey would have been so different. They would have been absolutely, cryptocurrencies are a fraud and they're going to zero and we're never gonna to touch them and this and that and yeah, all the rest of it. And now look how fast things have changed. That's the kind of world we live in today. Things change very, very fast. We're on that you know, adoption curve of technology right across the board. I mean, you know, cars that could drive themselves, you, they were just a, a thing of imagination when I was young. And I'm not that old, in my 40s, but <laughs> still sort of early 40s, only just. Well, probably getting close to mid 40s, depending on how you want to look at it. But yeah, cars that could drive themselves, ridiculous. You know, and now Tesla's doing it and all these other cars are coming out with it. Again, you know, digital money, that would have been laughed at when I was young. It's always been something you could physically hold and touch. And yet these days, hardly any of us actually use cash anymore. I know I hardly ever use it. You know, it's always, you know, you use your card to pay for everything. That's the future we're living. That's the space that uh, this is moving to. And five to 10 years, that really isn't that far. That'll happen fairly quickly. And then, you know, fiat money, the traditional sense, again, the paper or plastic money like we have here in Australia, will just be gone. It'll all be ones and zeros on computer screens. And they will be backed, in my personal opinion, not financial advice, by a number of these cryptocurrencies. There are some really good cryptocurrencies being built at the moment, particularly in the DeFi space and things like that, that are gonna have massive upside over the next, not just five to 10 years, 20, 30, 40, 50 years most likely, because they are the new form. And currencies, they usually last around about 100 years, thereabouts. So will Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies last 100 years? <sighs> You know, Bitcoin's already 10 years into it, so maybe it has another 90 to go. But maybe it has another couple hundred years to go as well because we have now moved into a completely new system. We'll have to wait and see whether, you know, cryptocurrencies can buck the trend. I think it's unlikely that I'll be here to see the results of that. But some of the young kids, uh, you know, coming through at the moment, they may be around in 100 years' time to see whether cryptocurrencies have stood the test of time or something else has come in. All right, this is very interesting. So there is a wealthy gentleman in Australia who is considering giving everyone some Bitcoin to go and get vaccinated. Very, very interesting. And look, he's even saying he'll do it for people who already have. Now, you know, don't uh, think you're going to make a million dollars off it, at least not overnight. He's giving $5 worth of Bitcoin to locals who have either had the jab or those who plan to get it in the future. Look, $5 worth of Bitcoin is not a lot now, but in five to 10 years time, that $5 worth of Bitcoin, I mean, it could be worth a whole lot more. Again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. And you know, not a bad incentive to go and get people vaccinated. Now they did say it'd look at, like it would cost him around about $104 million in total. Well, that's Australian dollars, around $75 million uh, US. Uh, if everybody was to jump on board. So I really like the idea. This is the gentleman here. He's been around in the crypto space for a while. Yeah, nice. I might even, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm already vaccinated anyway, so I kind of figure, you know, I don't really need that $5 worth of Bitcoin. It should probably go towards someone else who maybe really does need it. Right, Huobi. So a partnership between Huobi and Settled Networks Latamex, hopefully I said that, Latamex, will make it easy for users in Brazil, Argentina, and Mexico to buy crypto with fiat. 
this whole space is really starting to you know grow extremely fast in places like south america and countries that are less developed than others this is where the crypto space will you know that the people who get in there their lives really will change if they can get in early enough and onto some good ones and hold that that's the hard part is to hold and not sell too early really just probably hodl for the next five to ten years you know you know particularly if they get into some of the the good low caps and not super low caps again i'm not talking things outside you know really the top 200 i'm not saying there's nothing good there but that's very dangerous but you know just some of these kind of low cap DeFi ones that haven't fired off that may really sort of take off in years to come you know they could really change their lives and, and you know look bitcoin as well i don't think bitcoin's getting any, going anywhere the returns are still going to be great over the next five to ten years in my personal opinion not financial advice but some of the other coins will have unbelievable gains and, and you know for some people in some countries they might only have to put five dollars into a coin and you know if that kind of 10x is that you know because it's based in us dollars or you know whatever not their local currency that could really make a difference to those people in the you know five to ten years that could literally be sort of life-changing wealth for them don't get me wrong you don't you there's life-changing wealth full stop in crypto if you can find the good ones that are good projects you know and all the rest of it and are truly disruptive and that but just be careful because there's a lot of scammy shitty ones you know over 10,000 different cryptos I would say there's probably you'd be pushing to have maybe 200 really really good ones that's my personal opinion uh, and just based on my time in the space right more big money is coming 400 billion dollar wealth manager uh, hopefully I'll say this right, Newberger Berman greenlights Bitcoin investment. Now the company said that it uh, said that up to 5% of its commodity strategy uh, fund can now be invested in Bitcoin products. So the fund has $164 million uh, in it. So that roughly equates to around about $7.5 million they're going to put into Bitcoin. Now that's not a whole lot, but this is big companies coming and dipping their toes in. That is what is happening. They're just going to dip their toes at first and they're going to see how it goes. If Bitcoin does really, really well over the next sort of two to five years, they are going to drastically add to that. They just will. If they've got something that they put 5% in and all of a sudden turns into 20, 30% of their portfolio in a matter of years, they're going to start to pile a whole lot more into it. That is what is most likely coming. Again, I've got to say this, that's not financial advice. It's just my personal opinion from what I see. We are really starting to you know, get that traction and things are moving very fast. Now, not very fast in this is going to happen overnight. It's not because they will sell some if Bitcoin starts to go down, they'll panic. But eventually they'll, you know, hopefully they're smart enough to at least hold on to some. And over sort of five to 10 years, they're probably gonna see, again, a 5% position turn into maybe 20 to even possibly 50% of their total portfolio in this space, because they got 400 billion. So 5% is not gonna turn into that much. But if this 164 million, all of a sudden that may go up extremely and it'll be because of Bitcoin and then they're going to look into other things like Ethereum and DeFi. This space is getting ready to really start to move. But when we say really start to move, we've got to remember it's in, you know, in terms of time, not in terms of, you know, in more in terms of years as opposed to sort of months and weeks. It's not just going to explode and next week crypto is going to be mainstream and, you know, basically all the world's involved we're probably still around about a decade away from you know most of the world being involved as all of the world yeah we'll have to wait and see but it tells you how early you are and tells you how much you know percentage returns if you get in the right projects projects and hold and maybe even trade if you're a good trader it can sell at you know good prices and buy back in at lower prices awesome congratulations i do try to do a little bit of that myself but it realistically only is a little bit i'm more an investor right eip 1559 is on fire it has burnt more than seventy thousand eth it's only been going for like about a month or so that means it's removed over 220 million from circulation and Ethereum, where are we? Over here. Sorry, reset, where am I going? Ethereum, trading at 3,200. 
possibly a whole lot more upside because it still hasn't even got deflationary yet. That's the scary thing. It is not deflationary just yet. When things really start to heat up and everyone's going sort of crazy, that's when Ethereum will likely turn uh, deflationary. And then when it gets quiet and people aren't uh, into it so much, uh, it'll become a little bit inflationary. Uh, again, that's when people will start to accumulate, waiting for it to go up and down with the cycle. So very, very interesting. That's a lot of money to be taken out, 221 million. Right, last but not least, like I said, we're going to have a look at uh, CME gaps that have been formed. Now, what's interesting is we could be forming a bit of a CME gap in here. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see, but uh, nothing yet. But there is a CME gap starting here from a little bit below where we are and it's going right up to basically where we are. So this CME gap is probably about to be filled because they're not always below, sometimes they're above. Again, this CME gap got filled just there. And so this CME gap has now been sort of filled, but look at this. There is a CME gap all the way up here at about $57,000. So we could easily be dragged up to cover this CME gap as we could be dragged down to possibly cover this CME gap. So that's what we need to remember. There is the CME gap down at sort of, let's say $33,000 or 32,855-ish. So we could flip and come down to cover that. Now there's also ones down here that we can see 26,000 all the way down to, well, what do we got there? So, so yeah, 26,000 all the way down to, I think it's around about 24,000. And then we even have one all the way down here at sort of 18,000. So these will generally get filled, but what I would say is a lot of these lower ones, particularly these ones down around kind of the $18,000 and $26,000 mark, they probably won't be closed until the next bear market because that's totally possible. That, you know, the next bear market comes, maybe it happens at 100000 and then Bitcoin dips all the way back down to, you know, sort of 20 ish thousand. Definitely possible. But CME gaps, there's a few there. Uh, but again, a lot of these have sort of been covered, but really, this is the one I'm looking at. This hasn't been covered yet, and we could easily be dragged up there come Monday morning. Even if we get a little bit of a CME gap covered here, maybe we dip down to cover it, but then just shoot straight back up uh, and cover this one, which again is around $59,000, $60,000. Very interesting, and we'll have to wait and see. All right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another should all be on that game train at the moment and I'll see you next time.